This video is brought to you by Skillshare, an online learning community for creators with thousands of classes in design, business, and more. Skillshare are giving away two months of premium membership to help you explore your creativity. If you click the link in the description box below, that's for the first thousand people only. More on them in a bit. The name Albert Einstein has become a byword for genius, and rightly so. The German physicist's theories of special and general relativity fundamentally reshaped our understanding of the universe to a degree not seen since Isaac Newton. While his groundbreaking 1905 papers on Brownian motion and the photoelectric effect laid the groundwork for modern atomic and quantum theory. Yet despite his status as a giant of theoretical physics, one thing Einstein is not commonly associated with is hands-on mechanical innovation. It may thus come as a surprise that Einstein actually actually held over 50 patents for practical devices ranging from hearing aids, cameras, gyro compasses, and even a stylish vest with an adjustable elasticated waistband. But the vast majority of Einstein's patents covered an altogether unexpected device, a new kind of refrigerator. The origins of Einstein's long-forgotten foray into practical mechanics lay in a tragic accident. In 1926, Einstein read a newspaper article about a Berlin family who had died in their sleep when their refrigerator sprung a leak. Refrigerators at the time ran on a variety variety of refrigerants such as ammonia, methyl chloride, and sulfur dioxide, all of which are highly toxic or even explosive. Moved by this tragedy, Einstein set out to design a safer refrigeration system. To aid him in this endeavor, he enlisted the help of a former student, Leo Szilard, an acclaimed Hungarian physicist who, in 1933, would invent the concept of the nuclear chain reaction. They proved to be an ideal team, Szilard having written his doctoral dissertation on the thermodynamics of fluctuating systems, and Einstein having worked for many years as a clerk at the Swiss Patent Office in Bern, granting him intimate knowledge of the patent system. However, the presence of Einstein's name on the patent applications raised more than a few eyebrows, with several patent clerks writing back to confirm that this was indeed the Einstein. In total, Einstein and Szilard were granted 45 patents covering three different refrigerator designs. Their first design was was an improvement on the vapor absorption cycle invented in 1922 by Swedish engineers Baltzar von Platen and Karl Munters. Unlike regular vapor compression refrigerators, which used a mechanical compressor, Einstein and Szilard's system had no moving parts and was completely sealed, eliminating the need for rotary seals and other components that could potentially leak. The refrigerator used a complicated circuit to circulate a combination of water, ammonia, and butane refrigerants and was powered from the outside by a gas flame, much like the propane refrigerators used by many campers and RVers. But while this is the best known of the einstein sillard refrigerators, it is the pair's second design which most excited Einstein. Dubbed the Volkskühlschrank, or People's Refrigerator, this was an ingeniously simple device that could be powered by water pressure from an ordinary household tank. Water running through a venturi generated a mild vacuum, which caused methanol stored in the tank to evaporate. This vapor then absorbed heat from the food compartment before dissolving in the outgoing water, carrying the heat with it. While this process eventually consumed the methanol, requiring it to be regularly topped up, Einstein reasoned that methanol was cheap enough for this not to be an issue. Indeed, Einstein had high hopes for this design, which he believed could bring reliable refrigeration into the homes of even the poorest families. The pair's third design was by far their most technologically advanced but also the most impractical. This system was largely identical to a regular vapor compression fridge, except that instead of a mechanical compressor, it used a series of powerful electromagnets to pump liquid metal through a circuit. The liquid metal was then used to compress regular refrigerant gases. At first, the pair used liquid mercury, but when this proved insufficiently conductive, they switched to a liquid sodium-potassium alloy, which was not only highly corrosive, but had a nasty habit of bursting into flames or even exploding on contact with air and water. Despite this rather significant hazard, however, as the system was completely sealed, Einstein and Szilard were confident that this would not be a serious problem. Yet, despite the ingenuity of these designs, in the end, very little came of the einstein Szilard refrigerators. In 1927, Swedish Electrolux bought the absorption refrigerator patents for about $750, which is about $11,000 today, but this was mainly to retain control on their existing Munters von Platen patents, and the einstein Szilard design was never incorporated into any commercial refrigerator. Furthermore, while more efficient than other absorption cycles, the system was less efficient than regular vapor compression fridges, and the discovery in 1930 of the non-toxic, non-flammable refrigerant Freon nullified the safety advantages of the einstein Szilard design. The ingenious, water-powered refrigerator also turned out to be a dead end. Not only did methanol turn out to be far more 
expensive than Einstein had anticipated, but water pressure in German apartments was notoriously weak and inconsistent. And while the electromagnetic pump was an impressive technological advancement, its sodium-potassium working fluid was far too dangerous for household use. It was also loud. In the words of Szilard's friend, Hungarian physicist Dennis Gabor, the prototype howled like a jackal. Interestingly, given Einstein's more famous work in physics, the einstein Szilard pump did eventually find a niche use in certain types of nuclear reactors, which use liquid sodium potassium as a coolant. While Einstein's practical inventions never made as much impact as his theoretical work, 90 years since it was patented, the einstein Szilard absorption refrigerator may be poised to make a comeback. An improved version called the Isobar is currently under development by UK inventor William Broadway for transporting vaccines in developing countries with limited electrical infrastructure, an application that would have delighted the famously humanitarian Einstein. Now, just before we get into the bonus fact today, I want to say that this video was made possible by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with thousands of classes in design, business, and more. Unlike some websites where you have to pay for individual classes with a premium membership from Skillshare, you get unlimited access, so you can take as many classes as you want, which is pretty nice. Now, I'm someone who'll just jump into a particular part of a class, extract what I need to know, and then move on. So, sites where you have to pay a fixed fee for each class, it's not really ideal for me. I've talked about some classes I've taken before, and I'd still recommend those. I did Email Productivity from Alexandra Samuel. I also did Building Good Habits from Thomas Frank. Both of those are definitely worth checking out once you get started with Skillshare. Anyway, join more than 8 million creators learning with Skillshare. They're giving away two free months of premium membership to help you explore your creativity. Just click the link in the description box below. That's for the first 1,000 people only. And after that, it's super affordable at only around $10 a month. And let's get into these bonus facts. While far less well-known than Einstein, Leo Szilard was nonetheless a prolific and important physicist and inventor in his own right. Born in Budapest in 1898, Szilard spent the early part of his career in Germany, where, in addition to helping Einstein design refrigerators, he also independently invented and patented the linear particle accelerator, the cyclotron, and the electron microscope. When the Nazis came to power in 1933, Szilard, a Jew, fled to London, and it's here that he made perhaps his most important discovery, the nuclear chain reaction. On September 12, 1933, Szilard read an article in the Times summarizing a speech by physicist Sir Ernest Rutherford on the work of his students, Ernest Walton and John Cockcroft, who had recently succeeded in splitting lithium atoms. In the speech, Rutherford dismissed out of hand the notion of using nuclear fission to produce energy, a claim that so annoyed Szilard that he stormed out onto the rainy London street streets to come up with a rebuttal. According to legends, the answer came to him in a flash of inspiration as he waited for the stoplight to change at the corner of Southampton Row and Russell Square. Szilard realized that when an atom fissions or splits, it gives off several free neutrons, subatomic particles with no electric charge. If these neutrons could be directed to strike other atoms, more fissions would ensue, each giving off more neutrons and so on, creating a self-sustaining chain reaction. Szilard patented his concept in 1936, and in 1938 he moved to New York to work with Italian physicist Enrico Fermi on building a practical nuclear reactor. When the Nazis invaded Poland in September 1939, Szilard feared that with his head start in nuclear physics, Germany could be the first to develop an atomic bomb. He thus drafted a letter to President Franklin Roosevelt arguing that the United States should start its own atomic bomb project. But as Szilard was completely unknown to the American establishment, he decided to have the letter signed by one physicist physicist famous enough to get the president's attention, Albert Einstein. In addition to lending his famous name, there was another reason for involving Einstein. Nuclear reactors and bombs required uranium, and the primary source of that was Czechoslovakia, which was then under Nazi occupation. The only other source known was the Belgian Congo. As it happens, Einstein was close friends with Queen Elizabeth of Belgium, and it was hoped that this friendship could be used to secure a supply of uranium for the Allies. While in the end nothing was made of this connection, the Szilard Einstein letter had the intended effect. In January 1942, President Roosevelt officially approved what came to be known as the Manhattan Project, which a mere three years later succeeded in building the world's first atomic bomb. After the war, the ever-versatile Szilard switched from physics to biology, where he made numerous contributions to cell culture techniques, participated in the first cloning of human cells, and helped found the Salk Institute for Biological Studies. He also became an ardent anti-nuclear activist, warning against the possible development of cobalt-salted bombs, which he feared could bring about the end of life on Earth. Indeed, this concept formed the basis of the fictional doomsday machine in the classic
classic 1964 film Dr. Strangelove. In 1960, Sillard was diagnosed with bladder cancer, which in characteristic style he proceeded to treat with a regimen of radiation therapy he designed himself. Amazingly, the treatment worked and the cancer never returned. Four years later, however, Sillard died in a sleep from a heart attack on May the 30th, 1964. Of Sillard, Dennis Gabbard, longtime friend and Nobel Prize winning inventor of the hologram, would later say, he used to discuss all his inventions with me. I was so full of admiration that I felt quite stupid in his presence. Of all the many great men I've met in my life, he was by far the most brilliant. Had he pushed through to success all his new inventions, we would now talk of him as the Edison of the 20th century. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, please do check out our fantastic sponsor Skillshare, linked to below. And thank you for watching.